Hello, my name is Jan and today I'd like to show you how to fly the Super Cub in X-Plane 12. The Super Cub is an airplane that was built about 40,000 times since 1949 and in X-Plane we portray one of the later variants with a 150 uh, horsepower engine. So it's a fairly strong engine. If you fly a tail dragger airplane in X-Plane, uh, make sure that you set up your view correctly so that you can see uh, as much as possible of the runway. Uh, you know, the nose is in the way, especially with a high attitude like this. So this is how I like to uh, set up my view. And uh, I put that on control numpad zero. That's my safe view for the default view. And um, when you fly a tail drag, it's very important to set up the weight and balance correctly. The range of allowable center of gravity is very small. If you can see if you put in a lot of cargo, it moves back towards the aft limit. And um, of course, having it at the aft limit makes the plane unstable, both in ground roll and in flight. And if you have it too far in the front, like in this scenario with a very heavy pilot, then uh, you uh, have the danger of tipping over onto your nose and striking the prop on the ground. So that's also something to avoid. So if you're by yourself in the airplane and you're weighing 213 pounds like this, put in some cargo or take a buddy into the back seat and that puts the center of gravity nicely in the middle and uh, that makes it safe to operate this aircraft. And you see adding fuel does not really have much effect because the tanks are in the center of gravity position. So it doesn't matter how much fuel is in there center of gravity wise. Now that everything is set up, we will check the fuel and make sure that you check on the right or the left side correctly. Uh, on the ground you want to check on the fuel three point side so we're just over one half full and here it's uh, on the other side it's in the on the aft fuel three point just over half full the tank and that should be enough for this short pattern make sure that you put the fuel selector on the left right or both i like to do it on left first put the trim in the middle of the center position that's very important otherwise you might be in for a surprise when you get to fly start the master switch and the avionic switch that puts on electric power also turn on the beacon to warn people that we're about to operate this aircraft now we have set 122.9 that's the common traffic advisory for this airport and uh, that's the McKinley Park Airport just uh, west of the Denali Mountains here in Alaska and we turn on the transponder and um, now we're ready to crank the engine the we would we could open the window and yell prop clear do that to make sure no one is creeping around the prop and then just turn it over one or three times or a few times uh, to clear everything out of the propeller with the fuel um, in cutoff. Now we put in the mixture all the way. We prime about four times, three to five times is what the manual says. And then we crack the throttle open just a little bit. And now we're ready to start the engine. Hit the starter. The later models have a starter. Earlier models need to be... Um, cranked by hand. Of course, we make sure that the parking brake is set. Now reduce throttle until you're about at a thousand RPM. And as the engine turns, you can see that the instruments uh, come to life. The flags disappear. They're operated by vacuum power. We want to make sure that the directional gyro is set up correctly. Check the whiskey compass. It's actually a compass uh, in a liquid and you can see it's at 75 approximately. So you want to turn the directional gyro until it's also at 75. I'm moving down a little bit so I can see the, the lines a little better. And uh, you need to do that periodically. It uh, gets an error of about 15 degrees per hour. So you want to set that like every 20 minutes or so to make sure that you have the correct uh, thing set up. And this compass is bubbling around on the liquid so you can only do that in straight and unaccelerated flight. There's a correction table, no corrections in this airplane. So we don't need to add or subtract anything when we set up the directional gyro. And now it's set to 75 degrees magnetic. Also set the altimeter. Sometimes you can listen to an ATIS and if you don't have one, you know the field elevation at 720 feet here. So just turn until you show the feet or uh, the field elevation and then you know that your altimeter setting is correct. Reducing 
throttle a little bit now and I'm going to uh, check the engine next. So I'm going to add RPM until we're at about 1800 and um, then the first thing we want to do is check the carburetor heat and uh, we'll pull that open. You want to observe an RPM drop. That's also good against icing. You want to run that in uh, you know, icing conditions, or not real icing conditions, but when it's cold and moist. Check the magnetos. Right, both. The drop should not be more than 100 RPM. Left, both. And you see we're good. So that works fine. And now we will set the fuel selector to the other tank, just to make sure that both supply lines work well. Closing the throttle, we're getting ready to taxi. We announce on the traffic uh, frequency that uh, we're about to take the active runway. Of course, you would check left and right, make sure that no one is there. And having listened to the traffic frequency all the time, we hope that people flying into this airport would announce their positions so we would be aware of where they are. Now, when you taxi, a tail dragger on the ground uh, there are different methods often the tail wheel like in this plane is locked to the rudder so as long as the tail wheel is on the ground you have good steering uh, as other airplanes you need to steer with differential braking or just with the rudder or a combination of those but here in the super cup uh, as long as the uh, the tail is on the ground you have good steering and especially when it's uh, windy or so, you can help that by pulling back on the elevator and the stream from the prop will help you push down the tail. Now, as we take off in a second, you also want to make sure to keep the tail on the ground until you have sufficient airspeed, but um, don't keep it on the ground too long because otherwise you will just lift off and then you'll be fairly slow. You want to be above about 50 mph to fly safely without flaps at maximum gross weight. Of course we're not at maximum gross weight now but still. I'm uh, going to turn on the landing light now, turn off the taxi light and uh, just before we take off I want to lean the engine so I'm going to add uh, power again so about 1800 pull out the mixture just a little bit until I see the rpm peak now I know that I'm at the best power point have the most power for takeoff and then let her go during the initial takeoff run I keep back pressure on my uh, stick to keep the tail planted on the ground and as the airspeed builds at about 40 p.m. I relax that and the nose comes down and you see the airplane already starts flying so stay close until you're at a safe flying speed, about uh, 75 miles per hour, and that's a good climb out speed. You don't really need any flaps during takeoff unless it's a very, very short airfield, but um, keep climbing out at about 75 to 80 miles per hour. About 500 feet off the ground, I will turn towards the downwind, and I set up some wind from the northwest or uh, northeast so it's coming from the front right right now and it pushes me a little bit to the left so I need to allow for that in my pattern by offsetting a little bit towards the east so that the wind does not push me over the runway when you fly this plane always make sure that you are coordinated check the ball and the turn indicator you want to make sure that it is somewhere in between those two black lines for coordinated flight so you'll need a little bit of rudder when you start to enter the turn and as you exit the turn but during the turn you don't really need any rudder and uh, got a little fast pulling back up I want to go to about 18 or 2800 feet that's about 1000 feet above the aerodrome here that's uh, a good pattern altitude and there on the right side is the runway now I want to show you something uh, when you accelerate without coming back on the throttle look at the rpm it keeps going higher and higher as the plane gets faster and faster and there's a red line and the, uh, the engine is not really regulated to stay below the red line so you want to make sure that as you get faster pull back on the throttle a little bit to not bust the limit there and especially when you fly straight and level for a long time you don't want to be at full power all the time you can lean the engine during cruise 
and uh, the manual says lean until it starts running rough and then enrich it again but only lean once you are at uh, 75 percent power or so don't lean when you're at full power that could damage the engine now the plan is to turn back to the uh, airport announce uh, on the uh, common traffic advisory frequency that you're in downwind for mckinley airport uh, the ICAO code is Papa Alpha India November Pain. So if you want to recreate this flight, that's uh, how you can find the airport. And um, once you're below 85 in the wide range, you can drop flaps. And we're getting a little slow here. You don't want to be slower than about 70 miles per hour during the approach. We uh, added one notch of flaps for now. And the flaps are very effective in this aircraft. This allows you to drop fairly steeply. That's uh, important for um, airports that have obstacles close to the runway, as a lot of these uh, bush flying airports have with uh, trees or whatnot. And uh, that helps in doing a very steep approach path. And I'll show you a trick in a second how to steepen your approach path even further. Turning towards the runway, you can see it there in the distance, getting a little uh, updraft here over those uh, hills. Actually, uh, updrafts and downdrafts are modeled and explained. So if you set up winds and you're flying in areas of uh, big slopes, then you need to be ready for that to happen to you. Now I dropped flaps all the way. Speed is at about 70 miles per hour. That's uh, good for the approach. And uh, we announced on the traffic frequency that we're on final runway 34 at McKinley Park airfield and coming back down and you can see that uh, we're at 70 miles per hour that's maybe 60 or 55 knots but our descent rate is uh, 800 feet per minute that's about as uh, fast as an airliner would uh, descend so uh, if you do the math you can see that our approach angle is very steep much steeper than a regular glide slip but if you want to steepen it further do this you can do a side slip or forward slip it's aerodynamically the same thing full or a lot of rudder opposite aileron you can see how the descent rate goes to 1500 feet per minute or more and that helps you lose altitude quickly it's really fun to do in this little airplane and uh, it uh, reacts very well to all control inputs now as we do a light crosswind landing uh, make sure that you clear those trees here in front of the runway and then um, what you want to do in a crosswind is that you want to get the tail onto the ground fairly quick so you have good steering and you don't need to rely on the rudder alone and keeping the airplane straight so i'm going slow over the runway and then make sure that you don't touch down with the nose down attitude and see i pull down the tail and if you're slow enough, you will not take off again. So it's important to be good on your speed and then just keep that tail planted on the ground with elevator nose up input. And that also avoids you tipping over onto the nose as you hit the brakes. But normally you don't really need to brake much. Um, the plane will slow down by itself pretty good. Now find a good parking spot. And as you get off the runway, of course, raise the flaps. You don't really need to turn off the landing lights right now. It's bright daylight. You're not going to blind anyone. But of course, if you would fly at night, you would switch back to taxi lights as you taxi. Need a little bit of power here on the grass. Get into a position that's not embarrassing, fairly straight. There we go. And we shut down the airplane. And that's uh, fairly straightforward. You would just make sure that the parking brake is set. The next thing is you pull the mixture to cut off. Actually, what I do first is turn off the landing lights. Mixture cut off and the engine stops. Turn off the transponder. And uh, you can actually turn off or should turn off the magnetos so the engine doesn't start by accident if someone plays on it. Reset the trim to center. That's uh, always safe in case the next pilot forgets to do it, that he doesn't you do, do a nose dive on takeoff. And then turn off the avionics. Beacon first, avionics, master. There's no more electric power. And now you can 
open the door. You need to make sure that the little arrow's pointing down first. There you go. Open the lower part first, then open the window, and we're done. I hope you enjoyed this flight with us.